Hey, it's Sean from Tested. We are back with another Shops Tips episode. Um, today we're gonna talk about drill bits. So I am not gonna even scratch the surface of how many different types of drill bits and drilling mechanisms are out there, but these are some of the highlights and the ones that I use a lot, and hopefully you'll get some useful information out of this. So let's just start here at the end uh, with the regular old twist bits, which are going to be your standard drill bits that most people have. Um, when you get these, they're generally a standard length known as jobber's length, um, and they're going to be made out of a few different materials. So your typical cheapest ones are going to be high-speed steel. Um, they, don't, uh, they, sh they don't stay sharp as long as some of the other materials, but they are the cheapest. Um, then you go into cobalt steel, which is your next step up. And then you finally have carbide at the top of the list, which is the deluxe, which lasts much longer to heat and wear, stay sharper longer, and are the most expensive. Um, you also have different coatings which go on those. So if you get ones that tend to have a gold color to them, such as these guys, uh, it is some kind of titanium coating that helps resist against wear and heat once again. So if you have like a carbide drill bit that's titanium coated, that's like the you know, the, the most expensive you can get versus the uh, just regular high speed, high speed steel bits. Um, then you're gonna have different drill bits and different cutting uh, mechanisms for different types of materials. Um, one of my specialized ones that I like a lot are the wire gauge bits. So we have the fractional standard bits. The wire gauges uh, generally run from one to 60 for a general set such as the one I have here. Um, they do go up uh, as far as 80, which you get into really, really tiny drill bits because when you're talking about the gauges, the higher the number, the smaller the, the, the diameter. Um, and this index is, is, is measured from one to 60. And generally I am using these for uh, tapping. So you'll have a tap chart that if you wanna put threads into something, it will say to start the hole, use a number 53 drill bit, and that will size the hole properly for the threads of the tap to cut into properly. And this gives you a much finer range of drill sizes to choose from versus your standard uh, fractional sets. So this is, this is the one that I use probably more than anything for a lot of my stuff because I'm doing much smaller things. To make things even more confusing, there is also a whole letter series to these because once you hit number one, you have nowhere to go. So they have a letter series which tend to be bigger bits than these guys. Elsewhere in the world, they just use metric. Next, my favorite drill bits of all, these step bits. I've been using these more and more. You can get them in lots of different sizes from this like fine, uh, smaller set to this big fatty. And what they allow you to do is progressively drill a hole and step it bigger and bigger. Um, one of my favorite uses for this is in uh, uh, materials that tend to grab with twist bits, such as sheet metal, plastics, which might chip or break even if you try to use a twist bit on it. So like acrylics, um, step bits work really, really well for them. Uh, they're also good for if you just need to make that hole just a little tiny bit bigger, uh, you can step it through. Now, the problem you're gonna run with the step bits, um, I find is that uh, you are restricted by how tall the step is. So if your material is taller than each step, then this isn't going to work for you. Um, although you can get uh, step bits that have a taller step on them. But I use these all the time for lots of different things, particularly when I don't want it to grab or chip the material. Um, there are also bits that are specifically meant for drilling ac acrylic that have kind of a spade head on them. Another one of my favorites is the brad tip, which is kind of a tri-point. It has this middle one that's very sharp, and then these two tines on the outer bit. Uh, they're good for drilling uh, nice pre precision holes in wood or other materials that might fray or come apart, such as uh, composites or carbon fiber or fiberglasses. You'll tend to get a cleaner hole uh, with a brad bit, and because it has this nice sharp tip, it doesn't want to skitter around on you. Another sharp tip one is this uh, type of bit. It is meant specifically for plastics. It has a nice sharp tip to sink into the plastic and get it started. And the flutes are a little bit different to uh, keep um, your spirals of plastic residue from jamming up the drill or the drill bit uh, and kind of cleans it out a little bit better. 
Um, you also have the cement or masonry tips, which have this kind of chisel tip on the top. Um, some of these are designed to work with uh, hammer drills or uh, impact drivers. And then we have these guys, the spade and the Forstner bits. I know Adam really, really likes the Forstner, uses it a lot. Um, and these are for drilling uh, per, uh, much bigger holes than you normally can with the regular bits into uh, generally wood or plastic. Um, typically, you may not use, be using these on metal because they're not designed for that type of cutting. Uh, the spade bit uh, is the cheaper of them and it will make a quick, dirty hole. Uh, the Forstner is a much more expensive bit, but it will do a much nicer, finer finish for you. And we run into uh, some countersinking bits. So this particular bit will drill the hole and make a countersink beveled hole for like a flathead screw or recessing other fasteners all in one go. Uh, this particular one is nice because you can then flip it around and it has the driving bit for the screw as well. Uh, and then I have this adjustable one, which has a little uh, Allen set screw, which allows you to set how, what size and how deep you want the countersunk hole to go. Finally, we go to the heavy guns where we have uh, hole saws, which come in all kinds of sizes up to, I've seen at least up to three or four inches. Um, uh, these can do uh, sheet metals and uh, plastics and wood. There are different types even for masonry, which have really heavy duty cutters on them. And then we also have this guy, which is generally referred to as just a hole cutter. And it is, has an adjustable cutter for metal on it. You can adjust this arm in and out and you can use this to uh, cut relatively large holes out of sheet metal. Um, I have successfully used it on other materials such as MDF or even thin woods. You just have to go slow and careful with it, but it is a good alternative if uh, you need a perfect circle. Um, so that's, uh, that's some of the drill bits. I'm gonna leave you with some of my favorite drilling tools that uh, you may not be familiar with. Um, center punch, you're probably familiar with this. Uh, this is really good uh, for just making a little divot in the materials, particularly metals, because if you're trying to use a twist bit right on top of sheet metal, it's gonna skitter around on you. You use this to make a divot. This is an automatic one that is spring loaded and will make a little nice hole for you. Uh, I also like the pin vise, which are for really fine small drill bits. If you need to do delicate work and do it by hand, this is a great choice. I like this one that has the swivel top on it, which gives you better control. And then my all time favorite one, which is a bit of an extravagance. Uh, I know Adam really likes these as well. This is a uh, precision uh, driller, um, also called micro or sensitive drill adapter. Uh, so what, how this works is you put this into the actual drill chuck on say like a, a drill press, and then it has this ball bearing lever which allows you to grab hold of this and then control the feed on the drill. It also goes down to a, uh, I think this is a number zero chuck, which means it'll close down on really, really, really tiny bits. And this is great for very fine control and precision drilling. Um, I'll put some links for all of these in the comments, uh, including this drill chart, which I keep on hand all the time. This particular one's from Wood Magazine, and it just kind of gives you a rundown of all these different drills and recommended speeds, which is super important uh, because you don't want to run, you know, particularly drilling metal too fast. You want to use a lubricant, and it kind of gives you a little rundown of this. I have it hanging by my uh, drill press for reference uh, all the time. So we'll put links in the comments uh, for you guys. If you guys have any other particular favorite uh, drilling or hole making mechanisms, please let us know in the comments. And we'll see you next time for the next shop tips.